on to your hats and maybe look for those aspirin because he's at it again. In the never-ending saga of DeCaster versus the Las Vegas Metro PD, we now have ECF-34, which is the plaintiff's non-opposition to defendant's motion to stay discovery. That's right, he's not opposing the motion, but he had to file one. So, here we go. DeCastro offers the following response to all defendants' motion to stay discovery motion at ECF-32. In support of this motion, plaintiff submits a memorandum of law, which is fully incorporated herein. Now, just if you haven't been in a cave for the last little while, ECF-32 was a motion filed by the defendant's lawyers. And ECF-32, basically this whole document, was a motion um, basically saying that while the criminal charges from the arrest were still active, the motion requested that the court stay discovery in this matter until the criminal charges are resolved. And pursuant to the favorable termination of the rule set forth by the Supreme Court versus Humphrey, if DeCastro is convicted of the criminal charges, he may be barred from pursuing most or all of his claims. So they definitely want to do this. And then they've got Younger Abstention Doctrine requires that the court stay these proceedings while the state court criminal charges are ongoing. So they should stay the instant action during the, the for criminal charges. That's all it really says. But from that, he went on to uh, put 11 more pages together showing the facts, the procedural history, the legal standing, the keying factors, the heck fat standard, the younger abstention. Uh, then he actually started his legal arguments. Now, if you also have been in a cave for the last couple of days, you know Chile recently, uh, yesterday, got spanked in another case where they basically said, your filings are crap. So, what Chile did is instead of filing something to try to prove it, he came up with this nice little thing going, Plaintiff has not analyzed the law stated in defense motion, but that law is likely misguided as is the pattern of the defendants. So he's saying that they're not using the right law, right? Plaintiff has not analyzed the quotation of plaintiff's facts from his amended complaint, but they're likely misstated, which is also the pattern of these defendants. So they're lying too. So they don't get the law right and they're lying. And then he goes on to say, however, unlike the defendants, when this plaintiff has no factual or legal basis to oppose, the relief granted in a motion, he will not do that. Instead of just saying that he will not oppose it, does not oppose this motion, he does a snarky little response. Then he goes on to state, this court should grant defendant's motion to stay the civil action during the pendency of the state criminal charges proceedings if the court finds it has not been properly pled. So, why? Why? I don't know. 